Welcome to Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Katie Walsh. Katie is an architect um, with a pretty cool background designing spaces for a bunch of interesting companies. I don't know which ones uh, I'm allowed to know about. So. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tech startups in Pittsburgh, um, Four Moms, Duolingo, um, and then a couple of the other big companies that are in Pittsburgh that if you Google it, you'll probably figure it out. Um, awesome. And then same with uh, working with universities such as Carnegie Mellon, um, where a lot of the uh, maker spaces and robotics get from the academics. I span from that to the uh, workplace. Very cool. But, um, yeah. Yeah. It's a bit exciting. Can all right. So just to go right in, like, what's what's your favorite space you've worked on, or is that? Ooh, like that's a question? great question. Thanks, buddy. Well, I mean, there, there's, there, there's been a lot of spaces that have just been instrumental. So I don't know if I have a favorite. Smart. Um, I mean, I, and there's been things that have just been eye opening that have been very influential of my career that I felt like I really had a place. I mean, like stemming from my first project at Michael Graves, um, which was uh, St. Regis Hotel oh, in Cairo. Yeah, it's so it was cool. badass. Um, it, it, I went there in 2007 and we can dive into this like later. And it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. why would you go to Michael Graves? coming out of like 2000 yeah 2007 but we can get into that in a little bit um but my first project was um that st regis hotel and just to be able to design everything from head to toe was an experience that i guess i took for granted when i was there because after i left um and come to pittsburgh and it's like a different design scene that you're just not doing custom moldings and um like just custom moldings who who's designed custom moldings um that head to toe experience um was eye-opening and then i guess coming in four moms was probably another eye-opening um one of my favorite spaces because one it was a space that my friends worked at so yeah. like i and so you just don't want to let them down um it was a client i knew i i I knew them when they were like five people and they grew to 20 and then to 100 and so like just the pressure not to let them down and let's like um give them a space that they would love for very modest budget it it, it, and that challenge was um eye-opening and then to kind of fast forward um this project at Carnegie Mellon ANSYS when I was at BCJ it was another um, project that uh, was completely eye-opening. Um, the Boston Consulting Joint, of course, BCJ. No, it's a <laughs> Bolenswinski Jackson. I'm sorry. Um, not even close. <laughs> um, but there is, I guess there is. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Joking. Yeah, the, the, that project was just... Um, very complicated nugget of a building where basically you're putting a building where it doesn't belong. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Like that's every Carnegie Mellon building. It is. It is. I mean, like, just with their master plan yeah. now. I mean, it's just if you they have see a master how they... plan, I thought they were just. No, no, there's a master plan. Surprising. There is strategic <laughs> planning, even in Pittsburgh, there's strategic goals and planning and all that stuff um, of density and housing and all that other um things that go there but yeah no there's a strategic plan and that little nugget of a building um was connecting to two non-conforming buildings which is basically buildings that were built Before years ago plan. like in the 1920s oh, cool. I mean, this guy this guy henry hornbossel um who's kind of like the mastermind of um uh, Carnegie Mellon's campus and uh, is kind of like a pioneer in a lot of sense of architecture, but a lot of people don't know him. But, yeah. Um, Henry Hornfossil? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's like huge for Pittsburgh. Um, I what believe he did. Know? So if you don't, uh, downtown Pittsburgh, 
Um, there's the uh, cathedral. I don't know. It's right next to Villa Royale Pizza, which is fantastic. Um, I would like to go now. Yeah, it's it's a little like it's it's a Yinzer, like, yeah, like really those. good. Like before you go to the Pens game, you go there. Um, get yeah. a really nice like Labatt Blue and a slice of pizza. Um, <laughs> this church is like right near there. It's basically right across from the major bus stop, like Burlington Good Factory. Oh, cool. One of the best parking garages in Pittsburgh, which is a spiral one. Oh, nice. I love that. It just photographs really well at night. Um, uh, yeah, Henry Hornbostel did that one as well. Um, Was the parking garage and the cathedral? No, he did not do the parking garage, but he did the cathedral. But oh. it's a shame because um, they just don't have the money to restore it. So there's a, right. a big mesh net on it, um, which is just brutal. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that, that project was just such a complicated problem and I loved solving it <laughs> or like working with my team to solve it. Just trying to figure out how to fit a thing where- Yeah, I mean, it was like, it, it placed the building that, and it, um, the, the ANSYS makerspace was, um, part of the just like the Carnegie Mellon robotics like infrastructure of the CIT department right the the um the, the... college of information technology no 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 um crap crap in technology no <laughs> um computer information technology i don't know it, it, it's like mechanical the mechy um electrical it's like all the the robotics company it's like the infrastructure of everyone and then there's like a bunch of different college of science and engineering maybe shit cie cie i don't know anyway I've heard let's CIE. edit this out but anyway yeah, sure. uh, <laughs> um but cows in texas what cows in texas let's be real man <laughs> um <laughs> it's not helping my Sorry. um trajectory but um yeah, so uh, the project connected Porterhole, Hammerschlag, um, which were the big like science incubators for the campus. Yeah. And um, of course, each floor is not level, like connected. So yeah, this project okay, connected can, basically at, at like nine levels. Oh, a different... I didn't realize that was Nancy's project. You're talking about the one that all the machine shops on campus moved into. Basically. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, that's well and... designed. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> it's a fantastic team. But um, yeah. Yeah, what was interesting about that little nugget is because each of the, the buildings that are adjacent to it um, were not... They're non-conforming. So in the sense of like in the today's code... Um, they would have to do major upgrades to um, connect to the buildings because like you're limited to the amount of area a building can be based off the program if that makes sense it sort of does i mean I, yeah. i'm sure like the specifics would make it make more sense but yeah it sounds like there's just a set of rules that a building has to follow before yeah. you can build it everything's based on life safety and like okay. if uh, like the chicago fires of 18 um something um has set a lot of the codes of where we are and then they just keep on adapting so and... it's not at all based on appearance it's just purely based on safety no no like oh uh, i mean the the building code yeah I, yeah I, it's, it, it's life plan. safety okay. yeah no and the master plan is a whole other different thing okay and then the architects come in and we have to build to a code got it okay um, sorry my bad i got my wires we need to um the uh, a lot of architecture is um the life safety of a project like building so there's this intuitive function i think with um spaces that people just common i want to say common it's not common but like just like well-designed products um yeah. intuitive use of the space that you need to be able to figure out how to get out and there's a lot of memory of like well i entered here i'm going to leave from here from a lot of projects and so to be able to navigate a building to get out, but you're limited to the amount of area. Interesting. Um, on a floor plate that you can be in. If you're sprinkler, you get So a if you make more. a maze, you get in trouble? Uh, I mean, you probably could, but like you're, you have like dead end corridors. It gets yeah. like really nuanced. And, and um, the more and more I get in the profession, it's just been, uh, you just kind of know how to navigate it. That's cool. Um, 
That makes like sense. People pay us the big bucks, not really. But <laughs> <laughs> people think, and, and so part of it's like this intuitive design. And I think the value of architecture um, to make it um, intuitive, well-designed that you just don't know, like, you just don't yeah, know, like, no, oh yeah, my God. Of yeah, it's like that. It's like oh, air, it's you don't notice it's there. I'm sorry? It's like air, you don't notice it's there. Air? Yes, because it, well, it doesn't work. It's functioning. Notice. Yes, and then you know it's there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, and then you're like, why? But yes, yeah, so there, there's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things that are getting it. So, I mean, but to back up to the, the answers, yeah, it's like a complicated little nugget that, um, yeah. uh, that solved a really unique problem. And it also, like, to hit the campus master plan, it pulled the campus circulation wall through the building Wait, exterior the circulation wall? mall sorry my long island can kind of come out after no a cocktail um oh, good. but uh the 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 campus mall which is like that everyone was the campus mall. oh that thing like, in the middle of the campus yeah like the big green up. space yep, yep. like i went to syracuse okay. and one of the reasons why i went there is because i told my parents i was like I want to play frisbee here, and I'm not. I I'm awful at frisbee. Yeah. Like, if it's like the whitest thing I've ever heard, by the way. I probably <laughs> yeah. I mean, but like coming from Long Island, where you just yeah. didn't really do that type that, of stuff. That makes sense. And like, and I just picturing picturing what this like romantic version of college was. I was like, I want to go to Syracuse because they have this big central mall. They had the big cathedral, like the the chapel at the end, yeah. and then all the buildings were surrounded around it. And I'm going like in the middle of class, going to sit here, picnic with my friends. We're gonna throw a frisbee, and I didn't do any of shit. But like, and, I, and she went to Cornell, and I think she romanticized yeah. that for her. Oh yeah, life. Cornell was a rivalry for yeah. the architecture program um, uh, at Syracuse. But yeah, um, yeah. And, and and then I. And I grew up in Ithaca, and I'm like back in Pittsburgh because oh. I don't want to have anything to do with that. So. Well, Ithaca's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. <laughs> Um, we go there often. Bumper sticker cliche. I have the shirt. I have the shirt that also says like Syracuse's oranges. Um, <laughs> White that, oranges. I don't. It's just like they the spinoff of the yeah. Orange. Well, because Syracuse Orange was the mascot. Oh, I got it. At Syracuse, um, it was funny when I went there. Yeah, tropical climate. I'm pretty sure, but oh yeah, Syracuse, New York. Yes. Um, you can grow orange. You can grow it. I'm so no. horrible. I don't know it. Uh, Syracuse, New York. Not too far from Ithaca. Yep. Um, cold as shit. I mean, cold as shit. Um, and uh, yes, our mascot is a big piece of fruit. Which actually is really funny when it I went there. Doesn't grow natively. No, it doesn't. I, I I guess I should know that. I don't know the. I know it doesn't grow natively. I've attempted to grow lemons in Pittsburgh, and I feel like that's close enough. And that was a real pain in the rear. I've had um I had a um a friend of a friend grow a lemon tree in their house and um i want to do the same but i don't have the greenest thumb and it seems like that one challenging may fall on my partner sean's <laughs> and i'm told not to get any more of those type of plants <laughs> so, That's awesome. um I want to do an olive tree too. But oh, anyway. that'd be cool. I, so anyway, I was in Greece recently and everybody had an olive tree. Yeah, I just, I, I like olives. Um, but anyway, yeah, so like those are kind of like the instrumental projects. Um, and then I have a lot of heartbreak projects that just get so close and there's never, they get pulled. Oh, brutal. Been, um, I was I working on uh, this project for this... heartbreak project is a good word for that. What was that? Heartbreak project is a good word. Heartbreak, for that. yeah. So it just that. I have a lot of those. Yeah, um, I do too. And you you take it through full documentation. It went through permitting, and then it was just budget. pulled. <laughs> um, but it's, it's it's what I do. If you work with developers, and it just part of the game i mean that's a big part of research and development as well right because yeah. you're working on stuff that's by nature sort of far out and so i mean mm -hmm. the frequency my jobs get pulled is more than the ones that get completed like yeah. maybe like 10 percent of the things i start on get to actually get seen through yeah i mean i've done a lot of stuff in like dubai and china and then when um 
I guess my first recession because I've already gone kind of gone through my second one recently. <laughs> um, that was kind of fun. I, I got into the is. stock market. I sunk it all in in oh, March of twenty twenty. I mean, like. Yeah, every architect. I made a bunch of money. I'm happy about oh. it. Well, I mean, like a lot of architects go through Shouldn't like say, a recession. I'm not happy about it. So go. Uh, I made um, the most bad situation. I I I have no money, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, the um, is like a lot of architects go through the recession because usually one of the first things that go is like the arts, like uh, and and depending on what you're building. A lot of people just kind of pull out. But I feel like, like architecture is kind of like it's not necessarily pure art. Like it's also seems like a lot of engineering. Um, I differ. I I just I mean, I mean got good architecture permits. Good no, I mean that's it's that's what makes good architecture. Maybe like one Monet that follows a permit. Like I that. mean, it, and this is part of like the shit we have in Pittsburgh. All right. Um, it's just not good architecture. There's Fair no enough. longevity. I mean, yeah, like, you're not going to sit there in Rome or, like, Italy where the stuff that's been there for, like, I don't want to say years, centuries. Um, yeah, and, sure. and and question that. Like, yeah, there, like there's the an apple, art. The like, apple sucks. I mean, like, that's part of, like, the sustainability of yeah. just how we just create so much waste and and stuff like that um yeah and so true. there's a lot of buildings that just haven't really no, you just like look at it and you're just like this just sucks to look at like it's just not good design i mean and and we'll buy a fancy object like the iphone or something like that and like part of it is like you like it so much because it's intuitive it's well designed it fits in my hand well it used to fit in your hand better um yeah for sure and, the iphone 4 i thought was pretty cool yeah but i know i know a lot of my industrial design fans like friends will like flip out about like the new iphone you can't like fit in in your hand but like there's just yeah, nothing they, about it well phones got too big i kind of it used to remind me of a toaster a little bit like mm. like it's just trying too hard well, that's to be funny this big like thing. i cut my hand um yeah it's me too and ceramic yeah. stuff and like uh, i was just trying to like antibiotics while we're talking <laughs> oh nice okay um <laughs> the and i just Fumbling with it. But anyway, yeah, right, so, I mean, um, my those are my, like, three favorite built, and then I have a lot of heartbreak projects that, like, ah. Oh, so be. the Ansys Hall for moms and... Uh, it's Niall Corniche, which is, actually, in that project, got put on hold. I mean, I, I, I left Michael Graves about 10 years ago, um, and that project was on hold. I think it just opened up like a year and a half ago or a year ago. Um, basically, I, I like I've, I've seen the photos. I'm like, oh, I drew that. Like it's just so nice. cool to see. But um, I'm glad that your work persisted and got to stick around. Even after I mean, that. like my work. It, it, I think it's interesting with architecture. <laughs> there's like this star architecture thing, but like the team was about like 20 people. Oh, cool. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, and but like between features that you. Kind of own oh life. yeah i mean but like there um yes there is and and just working through the problem sometimes you can draw a doodle um and they'll be like build this and someone has to figure out how to like build it pull it together yeah. and, and so like that problem is interesting um yeah and exciting but yeah that's really cool yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i i i like it um <laughs> It's cool. I just want to build stuff. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, like, that too. Anyone wants to build anything, let me know. Call me. <laughs> Katie Welsh. Um, Walsh. Walsh. <laughs> I, I'm a little bit tipsy as well. I apologize, Katie Walsh. <laughs> it's funny. All my friends and like I was always known as like Katie Walsh is like the the full name. No one ever really called me Katie. It was like Walsh. Katie Walsh. <laughs> It just went as a package. It was just kind of, it was just funny. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I guess I do. I do think of you as Katie Walsh. I it just, it kind of flows. It just, it, it, it's a nugget. Um, it's a good name. Yeah. Um, there's a, the actress from Grey's Anatomy as well. So I think she would be Kate Walsh. So, yeah. um, but anyway, yeah. Like, um, isn't there like a Michael Jordan actor? It's like not the basketball player. I feel like. Oh, I mean, I I it's graduated. Like different, different it was really I mean, funny. Names are like there's only so many. I was, I, I graduated with like two other Katie 
that Katie Walsh was, I mean, like I'm okay. Catherine Walsh and we all kind of like go through like little stuff, but there was like three of us that graduated from Syracuse at like the same time. There was a Catherine Mary Walsh that was also in the system. Cause I was notorious for always losing my ID. Like <laughs> always. I, um, uh, I never, I mean, I transferred into the architecture program. So like, I was like the weird year older yeah. like, class. What did you start out as? math education nice. which is kind of funny uh <laughs> and i can't do math anymore Neither um I. I mean... which is really funny and uh i went to syracuse i was going to do public relations or architecture but you went in for math education uh i was really good at math and i didn't know my high school didn't set me up really to do a portfolio yeah, i didn't know sense. and so i played the violin and you kind of like only can do one art yeah. Um, I think secretly wanted to be a violinist, but I wasn't, I mean, I was good. I was high school decent, but like, yeah. um, not exceptional to making a career out of it. Uh, but, um, I, yeah, I could That's hold cool. a tune, but that was kind of it. <laughs> like, and, um, I tried to learn piano when I was a kid and I just always sucked. I, I, I love it. I was just a loud player, but like, I'm just a loud person. So it just made sense, but I in guess. In a good way, I think. Like, yeah, no, I mean, it's good. I mean, I always got in trouble at the library. Um, <laughs> the more but... I get to know you, though, the more I'm like, Katie Walsh is awesome. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, but, uh, or, yeah, so I went to Syracuse. Um, and my dad, I remember my dad telling me, like, because I went, I, I was, Long Island, so I'm part of the New York, and he's like, if you're going to do math education, go to a SUNY. Like, they're <laughs> probably better than Syracuse, um, and you won't be as much debt. I was like, Dad, I'm not going to be a teacher. <laughs> I, I, for a man, I, I would like love. A I, well, I mean, I was like, I just want to figure it out. He's like, all right, do it. And then, like, I wound up extending my college, my undergrad I did that career. Too. I, I think I did six years of undergrad altogether. Yeah, I mean, because I like I transferred in, and then like it just it was it was a mess. I, I architecture. Well, I started Kiss Western, then went to Pitt. Oh, cool. Mm. No, I like with architecture, particularly for most of the undergrad, the Bachelor of Art program, you have to be sequential. Like you can't accelerate at all. There are ten studios, and you have to take them in order. Interesting. Yeah. Um. There's like no way to. You can maybe graduate a semester early, and like. By the time I had that choice, um, I was with my best friends and it was just like, I'm not, I, I'm going to be miserable trying to like graduate before them. These yeah. are all my people. Like, so I was able to take, be a research assistant, which is kind of rare for an undergrad for, um, uh, my mentor, Lori Brown and help her with her research, which was just, uh, I was in over my head, but it was like such an amazing yeah, experience. Cool. Um, I mean, sometimes that's fun though, because oh my god, I it. loved it. I loved it, yeah. and I'm like trying to figure out how to get that back into my life um, in some capacity. Makes sense. But um, yeah, so I, I, I did the Syracuse thing, and um, it was great. So I, I, I'm awesome. trying to like figure out where we kind of landed with this conversation. I don't know if it's because of the mall. Never really got to use them all that much. Maybe towards the end of like our fifth year, we're like a bunch of us were like, we're gonna like hang out actually at the <laughs> like get out of studio and like hang out at the mall um, nice. <laughs> and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I forgot how we got to that part, but it's okay. Um, I forgot too. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, the architecture stuff. Um, so we talked about like art versus like science oh, and architecture. You mentioned it was more of an art. And then you talked is. about staying power of buildings being proof of that. Like, yes. Like, which kind of makes sense. I mean, well, like, I mean, it's just a good architecture. I mean, like, and, and, and the value of it. And like, I think you can be smart and still hit budgets and, uh, and still hit budgets. I think I mean, it's smart. Like a I bit think like people just want to get fussy. Well, like, that it's not like a little bit of business and science, though. It is. Like, I mean, I, to I think budget is business to be able to hit permit is science in a way. 
yeah, yeah, yeah or like science, analytical. Um, the yes, I agree. Um, I think there's a balance, and that's with good architecture. And and so like I've been having this co- conversation with like a couple colleagues about um good architecture and um to me the best architecture is when you're not trying super hard to just be something special i feel like the best stuff is when you just kind of let that go and let the project just be um and some of the best projects i worked on it was not because we were striving to get a certain thing it was kind of just like what does a project need to be what is the smartest solution um and strive for that does that make sense yeah i th- I, I find people get fussy and i think that's a lot of the problem with like just the stuff you see in the strip district in pitch in pittsburgh and um i mean can you give me an example without throwing someone under the bus or like i just anything in the strip district uh, besides that's anything that's like old that's adaptive for use um, there's a lot of stuff that's like one or two stories i guess so you yeah I just, things get too fussy and like it, it, one of my favorite moments of a building is when before they put all the cladding or like the the stuff on it if you just look at the box yeah and like you see the trivec like the the moisture barrier stuff and um on there Oh, okay. If you just yeah. see it as the object, you're like, this is really nice. It's very clean. I don't know. I guess it's aesthetic. Oh, it's cool. a choice. Yeah, that makes, like, it's like industrial designers talk about form. Yeah. Like you yeah. just look at it and then you just see like the shit that they put on it. You're just like, Ooh, that was so much better if it was just a box. And if you can kind of, I think there's like this restraint that people, it's just really hard, easy to just like more and more and more and more and more add this i'm gonna like and you get super focused on this like little minute detail but you just don't oh i see that step all the time back with my work yeah yes and, and, and like people get so hyper focused because i'm like this is kind of working with teams you have people you deploy your teams on these different little things and then people are super hyper focused on it and you're not pulling the team back to kind of just like see how it all connects and then it just turns into like a shit show yeah, makes sense. <laughs> um, so you're optimizing for something that doesn't need to exist. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm maybe more. I'm like more on the minimalist. Um, there's a lot to be said for that. Like, there's I, I just think there's I, being simple. I put that in quotes. It takes a lot of restraint, and I think it also gives like a lot of. Um, I don't think that's unique to architecture. No, I know it's not. It's yeah. like with product design. Like, look at the best product design stuff. Yeah, or even um, like my dad's a surgeon. He was saying that like the new people will like go in all cowboy mm-hmm. and try to, you know, like <laughs> talk to a proctologist about this, different guy. <laughs> and he was saying people will go in cowboy and they'll try to like remove like a tumor with like, a, you know, like the probe you use for a colonoscopy. Oh, it, fun. It's not designed for that, right? And so, like, nah. you, you're more likely to cause an infection than to fix it. Yeah. And then, like, my dad was saying that for, like, you know, like, a surgery, like, a lot of people will try to be really fancy and they'll try to add, like, extra stitches that don't need to be there and do all this stuff. And that results in increased complications and but it fucks up it, the surgery. And so I feel like it's it's similar. I mean, it, you see it in engineering. It you know, could like, be like a human nature. I've done it myself earlier in my career. Like, oh, yeah. I, and I, I've fallen into I'm not, like, like I've fallen into it, but and maybe there's just something about like the human nature of, um, you bored, like you you're bored or just like I need to switch something up. Or like you're like, trying and... to create your Sistine Chapel, but you're trying too hard yeah. and you're doing so, and you end up focusing on minutia that shouldn't even be there. Yeah, I think maybe it's like a, it's 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 trying to be the next big thing, and sometimes, and it's just. So I, I I find my better success is if I just let it go and just like yeah. sit back for Same. a little and out. not get all like fussy. I think this is just in life in general, like um, stir the pot too much or it's just um, getting caught up in minutia. It sounds yeah, like. and it's just like nonsense. It doesn't really matter. And then, um, well, some people will like die on those hills, or they'll choose to fight over something. Oh, like I feel like lawyers are like this, especially where they'll like choose a point that doesn't matter at all and then they'll just you know dig into it and... i mean and there's even like fighting with my sister even or something like that there's yeah, just like something i know i'm just gonna like 
I'm gonna jab you. Like I know this is gonna like piss you right off. Piss you yeah. off, and I'm gonna say it, and I'm gonna <laughs> sit back, and then my dad's like, "Fuck." <laughs> Did I make them come home for the holidays? Okay. And then, like, um, oh, that was Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, like, I mean, I get it. And, and so I think there's like this reserved. I think my sister injured herself the other day and I went, that's hilarious. My mom told me about it. <laughs> like, this is like reserved yeah. maturity that I think is just trying. And I feel like I'm coming more and more being able to articulate it better. I think it's like always been coming. And then when you get in the profession, it, um, you're balancing the needs of your boss on top of the, just trying to make it. And um, yeah. And yeah, then, for sure. But, and then you've got stakeholders with clients or other coworkers and you're trying to navigate the to client is always interesting. And um, cause I mean, clients are very interesting. I love client service. I mean, it's, not always easy, but it's definitely interesting challenges, sort of one after the other. I like, I mean, and that's why I mean, part of the job. Oh, I, I no no no, I agree with you. Like I I like, um, the client aspect. I like the to be able to kind of hear what people are saying and then like see it in my head and be able to articulate that. Sometimes with visuals, it's just really exciting when they're like, "Yes, that was it." I didn't see that, but that's what I was describing. Or like you present options and then mm. you make them feel ownership for like a design or a thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that clients do have some kind of ownership in it because like it is. They're financing you're, it. You're, you're eh, not just like a financial like <laughs> thing, but like as as cheesy as this may sound and like, um, yeah, like I, I do think because ultimately, and I'm realizing this more and more, you, you didn't get this in college. Um, you lot. are it's in, over, I think. what was that? There's a lot of stuff college glossed over and didn't. Yeah. Work. I mean, but uh, I mean, like it's a separate, like, I think there were things in college. I mean, I, I loved my schooling at Syracuse, um, that taught you how to think, um, and see space. I think it's really important. I, I, I just working with various groups of architects and uh, just being able to see and being trained how to see, um, it's a very interesting experience that you like, it just clicks when it comes there. That's um, yeah, I mean, I, it's kind of hard to describe. Um, it'd be, <laughs> what I should show is like my sketches before architecture and then like after and how much I remember like my pre-architecture. When you say architecture, perfect. you mean school. Yeah. Yeah. Like my, my, like before I went in and out and like, um, uh, it was really funny. So I I was like drawing teddy bears and stuff like in uh, yeah, like cuz there's like uh I was in a pre-architecture class and you're supposed to um uh draw a negative positive space. They have like all these like goofy things that you're What's just, that like, negative what is positive this? space? Um try like look like um It's really hard for me to describe it without oh, showing really? it, but I can give you an example. Um, it's it's one example is like when you're drawing a building okay. and you're looking at a plan. Are you familiar with that? Like um, like a like a single floor blueprint. Or? Yeah, like a plan. So like they, the architects have um, different ways of communicating a space to have build it. Plan is kind of like one of the the biggest fundamentals. Is like you cut the building at about four feet um, throughout that plan and then you look down so you're locating walls in relationship to other and then you have sections which start to get to the volume of space Interesting. and um good architecture is when they're actually really thinking about the section and plan because plan sets your proportions but your section really gives you the volume of space um I've done some like a sectional view section is kind of cutting vertical. So you'll take okay. a plan and you're like, you're, you cut the space vertical and you're seeing the relationship of program. So like yeah. a bunch of floors, you all... can see a bunch of floors, okay. but the biggest thing is I, I like to do is like, I put a human scale in there. Cool. Um, and you see your relationship. Oh, I like to design to proportion yeah. and actually how I like to teach is to proportion. Um, I, when I was at Syracuse, I co-founded this group, um, 
women in design with a colleague of mine and cool. we also spearheaded this group that um taught at the local elementary school design and, and there's a bunch of my classmates that we developed this program and one of the things we did was um that all the kids one of the programs um the kids designed a martian like a you landed on the moon you have to design a habitat it's yeah. you and your little martian friend it could be a dog anything wait martian or lunar martian like you're on the moon <laughs> So and lunar. <laughs> lunar yeah so. yeah um but uh there was no rulers or anything you yeah. built towards we took pictures of them the first day of class and then we gave them a scale photo of them and they're like build based off you so like yeah. if you want a table where where do you stick it um and it was really interesting, interesting. That's so cool. this gets into my section thing yeah. so um people were designing one kid was wanted to feel really small if it so he, he built this like really tiny little nugget because uh no actually really large so he was very tiny so he built this really large thing and it would find feel smaller. out okay yeah so um from the art teacher we find out that like yeah like the kids pick on him and so he feels very small like she's like all these things were very interesting to see because the kids were designing based on their scale so like scale and proportion so based on experience too yeah so and so like it's... for me that's how i design is kind of like thinking about the volume of the space so if your design gets accepted you're sort of allowing somebody else to step into your perspective kind of like i design based on perspective like i yeah. and so that's kind of where i get like the syracuse taught me how to see um i it it may not come out in the drawings but like when i photograph a space um I know what space to put, like how to photograph. Yeah. We do like promotional, not promotional, but like marketing images and stuff for like the projects we do. So I yeah. just finished one at Gateway Center. Um, cool. And I knew, it was actually interesting. It was like one of the first times that we walked in and the view didn't work. And I was like, shit, this is not what I was expecting. Like the view didn't work. <laughs> it was like, like the weather was fucky? No, I mean, it's all interior. It was an interior yeah. fit out, but like it just the, the camera angle didn't work with what I saw in my head. Oh, and usually the camera angle works. Um, so we had to like pivot the, the, on the fly with the, I worked with the photographer, we pivoted the view angle and like he's professional, like he knew what he was doing. Cool. Um, at Perkins Eastman, we have a photographer and he's awesome. Andrew. Um, and him and I have like worked through just kind of pivoting, but like when I'm designing the spaces, I'm thinking of that view and all that stuff. Um, but anyway, uh, so yeah, I guess going into like plan section, that's kind of how you're thinking about the volume of the space. Um, it's just these things that are a little like you don't know about it until you experience it. Um, yeah. And arguing not arguing but like talking with clients like trying to make sure that particularly for like developer projects you're trying to get the most efficient space possible just because of the value of material so like shaving off six inches per floor pretty huge could save on like a five-story building you're saving it's like you're you're saving a lot of material surprisingly yeah uh, but then you're also compromising it because you have all these like mechanical stuff that you have to shove in there based off your program so I, it's sense. like it's a game yeah um, it makes a lot of sense and, and there's some things i look at where i i just i try to guess how expensive it was to make oh like yeah you can't i mean particularly now you can't it's all like crapshoot with just the yeah. just what's going on with um uh things that were really cheap are now expensive and things that oh, are expensive or like I mean, now affordable guess, like the human con like if you look at like a stadium or something like how many people had to work on this for what amount of time oh yeah i mean happened? um yeah it, it's amazing i mean I, I i think the romantic version of an architect is just like this one person slaving and doing all these drawings and i think that only really exists for houses like yeah, I mean, in like special houses yeah but even. like but for a stadium yeah there's like usually a design principle of making sure that like it's it's staying within target um and actually that person was in the trenches 20 years ago and knows you like, would hope you would hope but usually I mean, um 
and and usually they're like that outside the perspective have that experience yeah i mean but like they're talking about that like that outside perspective or the um that twenty thousand foot like view from like they usually can come in and be like whoa, whoa, whoa you guys are like focusing on stupid shit that just doesn't matter like <laughs> um and it's not connecting to the larger picture and then you're like oh my god what? like why didn't i see this so like i, I think these teams need to be balanced to have like so the design principle will kind of like bounce between a bunch of projects just making sure that the things are kind of staying <laughs> yeah that's forward cool. but um so the yeah. person that leads an architecture project is called the design principle uh it really depends it's just uh, like it's so it it's you can't put everything in the like a very small box i think with architecture because like all these i mean we're struggling with this right now of just trying to like figure out how to be efficient teams and um how to be efficient and stuff like that because um making sure that the value we're hitting the value of the clients and stuff like that but um really depends which is like a cop out but no, it, it does. Sense. It does. I mean, I, it's just it's common in my work more and more. Yeah, it's it's crazy. And yeah. You, know, you get your own preconceived notions and you go in and you talk to a peer and they're like, actually you're wrong. And you're yeah. like, thank you. <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah, yeah. And so I mean like peer reviews are really important. I, I think, think so too. Um and having like design check-ins. I think the the team can just kind of be heads down, super focused. And sometimes that's just like that one curveball from an outsider really can just kind of get the project back on track, which is, and, and at the time you can be like, oh, that's annoying, like, ah, pain in the ass. But like in the long run, you look at it and you're like, oh, wow, like that really actually kind of, that feedback really helped that we were able to run with it and take it. So like architecture is super interesting that it's, it's this big collaborative thing. It's a team. Yeah. Um, they don't teach you that in college, though. No, they don't. <laughs> no, not. that team thing is just like I think that doesn't help. But they they've like... been trying lately. I think they've been trying to put more and more teams. Teams are hard. Um, yeah, I guess they're I... worse than clients. <laughs> I think. I don't know. Teams are cool. Like I, I like. Oh, teams I think so. Work. I don't want to say like teams are like awful. I'm just saying like, um, okay. I was asked this question, like, have you had like a sticky conversation with a client it's like yes yes i have like delivering bad news yeah or just like or something failed i had like a that's bad news yeah and like it's not like it's something that we it's like a post occupancy after the project went through something failed oh um, brutal. yeah i mean it happens i mean it happens more often than not it just there's human error so the client building. came to you in this case you yeah they called and just like hey the this thing failed couch fail um and um what, what are you gonna, gonna do, about, do it? about it <laughs> yeah i was like all right <laughs> luckily it came in an email so i was able to like sit and think um so yeah i mean cool. uh we were able to work through it i think it was it was a fair assessment i mean they were 100 percent right i think our vendor put it in the right perspective um and we right-sized it um I think there are harder conversations talking with your teammate that's like you're not doing what I want you to do. Uh, um, pretty brutal conversation. Why well, or even just like I have to say with like a whole lot of butter enough to like, hey, uh, I, mean, I think we're, you're really smart. I, I, I like working with you. However, yeah, I, I hate I, you and you should go home. No, God, no, it's not like I hate <laughs> you, Jesus. No. <laughs> um no, I maybe mean, just be like the priorities of the project are just not aligned and stuff yeah. like that. So like you're working on something that just has nothing to do with what we're supposed to be doing. That makes sense. We don't have the fee right now, so let's have, let's let's step this back to like this is this is the focus area. This is a great idea. I don't find you wrong, but that's let's... not what we're getting paid to do right now. Right. Come yeah. over here. I have coworkers that act that way sometimes. And yeah. And so you have it... to write them in. Yeah, but like, and how to do that tastefully because you're like, oh my God, I know you're like, I know where you're coming from. I know why you're doing it. I agree with you, but you're not getting paid. There, there's one engineer that I, I work with occasionally on contract projects. And this person is uh, very smart, very effective at what they do. 
um, they are able to, and they're hardworking too. Like mm-hmm. they'll work like maybe like 60, 70 hours in a week and just deliver results. But sometimes, you know, like if they don't like a client's requirements, they'll just be like, I'm not doing those requirements. Yeah. I'm like you can't not do those requirements. Those are the requirements. Well, I mean, I <laughs> even the... learned that when I was my, my first couple of years at Michael Graves. Yeah. Um, you would get these like doodles from the principal in charge um come over and you would have to like hardline it which sometimes the doodles make no sense like you just can't hardline it but that, that's part of the that's part of the um strategy they would just like pump out a bunch of stuff and then we would have to kind of like make it work or they would give you the strategy of like um you would think though if they'd been sitting in your seat 20 years ago they would yeah know i mean it, okay. we were pumping so much stuff and like yeah, there and the goal was like they give you kind of like the guidelines and then you would kind of make oh, it work see. a little bit so like there's a bunch of doodles um i remember and like there's guidelines of like you never like the priorities of bathrooms i was working on bathrooms right at that time for a hotel for that hotel um like don't walk in on a toilet like that was the rules. You know how hard that is sometimes. Don't, not don't. don't walk in on a toilet. Like so, when you open up the bathroom door, yeah. you're not walking in a toilet. It's like it's the St. Regis Hotel. You do not walk in on a toilet. What do you mean? Don't walk. So you're like, never gonna you, see a toilet when you open the door. When you open the door, you want to see the sink or the mirror or like some kind of like art piece. If oh, not, geez. it's not a toilet. It makes sense, right? Yeah, like, sort of. it, I mean, toilets aren't that unattractive. Yeah, but I mean, you're in a St. Regis hotel. Like, there's just like this yeah, ambience. Yes. Like, you want like a, a, a well designed, custom sink, with nice faucets, really nice lighting. You're looking upon yourself. Like, there's just like it's a whole other, yeah. um, thing or like a bathtub. Yourself, shrug the ego. Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's. It's the St. Regis hotel. You're staying in the St. Regis hotel. Oh. Um, but. I remember like one of my first year and I was like, That's oh. interesting. That's that considered. Oh, we were, yeah, well, yeah. We, uh, oh, um, yeah. I mean, to this day now I still like, I try not to walk into the toilet. Well, that's, that's <laughs> interesting because I, I feel like that's, it makes sense. And I, I think I can get that, but I also feel like it sort of goes counter to what we were talking about, about like overthinking things. I don't think it's overthinking things. Yeah. I think it, it's about the experience of the space. Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of like the, the upper, there's like levels of different spaces. Um, and, uh, like the, the bathroom would be like in its own like little separate thing. And like you're building in, um, Egypt. So it was like, it wasn't like your standard wood stud walls that you have here or even metal. It was like concrete block. Yeah. It was all metric too, so I was learning that too. Nice, metric but, is great. Uh, I I I miss metric because it was like so much cleaner, and now you have to do with like. I've been doing mostly metric up. lately, but I grew up on imperials. So I feel like I yes. went the other way. Well, it, it drives me nuts, like when mm. you dimensioning stuff, and it's like clean dimension kids. Um, yeah, well, you just gotta pick a lane and stick to it. I think. Yes, but like you, you need to. The funny thing dimensions is, dimensions are a funny thing. I, I had a coworker show me prints of the. Uh, thing i'm working on <laughs> just, i'm not throwing anyone mm-hmm. under the bus and um this fellow designed it in and in, in metric because he abhors the imperial system but everyone else was building an imperial so it was all like That's... you know 113.35 inches or yeah like it didn't make any sense and i'm just like dude no one like, builds no one builds pick a lane no one builds, lane. No one builds know, like, that um, but, uh, uh, yeah, so I, I, I get back to that story. The, um, I went to my boss and I was like, these are great. I also made some designs and I showed it and he was just like, Psh, nope, this one, like the one that I hardlined one of his good ones and like, it, and that made the, but uh... I, no, it's fine. And actually like, I, I look back at it and i've had this conversation with some of my other folks that came from mga um we we knew at that time like the folks there we knew where to push it um but we always like you knew to do what they told you to do yeah and then you you put your own little bit extra time to kind of like see if something else will get through but um nowadays i think sometimes People yeah. will just 
do what they want to do and you're like not even no do what supposed to. Yeah. no can you please test out my idea and then also like you can i'm i'm all up for it but you got to test what i have yeah. because there's fundamental things that were incorrect with yours that mine actually hit so if you did that then you can take that and move on so i mean it was like an interesting i mean Kids like these days uh, yes but like it was it was it's just an interesting I and mean, i don't like we don't know if it was like because we were there and we just knew that's what you were supposed to do um or it just like a disregard. I mean, Eli also talked about Michael Graves. Like that yeah. seems like a pretty. I, yeah, we always come back. It's kind of like a funny thing that I was like, ah, I can't believe I'm going here. But like, I was always super interested in product design. It's like one of the only architecture firms that have product design and architecture combined. Yeah. And I was like, well, I can I, I can figure out what I want to do. It was also like a I knew I couldn't go to New York. Um. Just, I needed I needed. To take a break from where was things. MGA located? Princeton, New Jersey. I did not know that. Okay, yeah, cool. Princeton, New Jersey. And so it was a really good hot spot to go to like Philly I and New York. I was able to yeah, like you're, you're I like was a... there every like I was in between Philly and New York a lot. Um, see the family. See my family on Long Island, but also my friends in Brooklyn. Yeah. That's um cool. and so I would go my brother's in Brooklyn. Party with one of my friends that was in uh, Williamsburg right. before Williamsburg was super cool. Um, like she was in this before all the hipster well. nonsense. All before all the hipster nonsense when it was a little more crusty. Um yeah. I was there. But um and then Philadelphia. It was just and it it was just an extension of college. Um we had a really good group of people. I think the the work was interesting. Um, and it was really good just stepping off and then the economy tanked and I kept on waiting to get like, let go so I can go to grad school and I never got <laughs> let go. I was like, that was, I was like, that's my out. I'm going to, I'm going to get laid off and then I'm going to finally get to go to grad school. I never got left. It's let go. It's fine. Actually, I, I'm, it, it took like, yeah, grad school's overrated. I, it is. I mean, it was like if I was, I, I've always had this like hankering to like. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. No, I mean, like to teach. I mean, there's opportunities to do it without it, but like, um, it, it's. Someone gave me this advice. I'm just like, it's what politics do you want? Do you want the academic politics or the professional politics? And I was like, I hate them both. <laughs> like, yeah, for sure. I hate the professional politics. I've heard. Um, the academic politics suck pretty bad. But it is. I don't know that as well because I never got super duper steeped in academia. I, I mean, I saw it. I have three hand. degrees. I guess I'm, I was in it for a minute. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched a lot of the faculty go through it. It's really hard, particularly like, like if research you're... fraud and shit. Like, there's some weird stuff. Oh, I, I I never heard research fraud. Yeah, it, was just, it, it, it was this just it. It's like people like making up studies to to get validation oh. and like. Academic I've never journals. heard of that, but I, 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 I'm naive, I guess, I think, to, like, a little bit of, like, the, I just, I just thought the, the, the life balance of it, and the, um, you're, you're kind of tethered to the school, and some of these schools, like, in architecture, you're in the middle of nowhere, some of these places, and the yeah, competition's stiff, and, um, stuff like that, and, uh, and, yeah, I kind of wonder why some of these schools are so remote. Like, uh, I mean, some of them, are, like, cheaper... if you look at, like, Syracuse is, like, the 1800s that came or something like that. Oh, and, that's fair. So they, um, they didn't know that there wasn't going to be shit in Syracuse when they... Well, I... Actually, I don't know. I've never really followed, like, why... But, like, Rensselaer Polytechnic is in, like, Troy, New York. Which I don't know if you've been, but it's it's the ghetto. My cousin went there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, and I started counting Crow's <laughs> concert there. Yeah. Um, so you know how ghetto that place is. Yes. Yes, if I remember, we were a little drunk on that concert. Nice. Uh, no, but my yeah, my cousin went there, and um, uh, yeah, I mean, like all the upstate colleges, and actually at Syracuse, like when we one of the, I think it's second or third year, third year, no second year, um, each studio has a theme. When I was there, and Interesting. one theme was like college, so I went to like Colgate and studied. Colgate's campus, which is super interesting. Um, and um, yeah. And like, That's cool. Is that nearby? Colgate was like up 
north from Syracuse. I mean, oh. it was day trip. Like they did day trips, and yeah. And then I went to like um, SUNY Cortland. There was this guy, Vernon Solomon, who is another like upstate New York architect. He kind of was like very influential for the Syracuse architecture program, um, and very uh, mid century, which I have a soft spot for. And um, we went and studied his building and he just studied like the systems, the mechanical systems and redraw it and all this stuff. I was more interested in like the cool Eames furniture that was in there. And they had like this, like the old replica and my um, roommate and uh, college classmate we were like thinking about like, do you think they would know if this chair is missing? Cause it was like this beautiful Eames chair with this gorgeous like green tweed and a pink tweed. Um, fabric on it that it was kind of rare but we've never seen before but no we did not steal it um <laughs> thought about it like do you think they would see if this went missing and so like architecture students from syracuse come to st study building two each chairs are missing and it's like no we didn't take it Probably but not a good idea yeah no it's not a good idea but we i um I mean, we anyway. stole and vandalized stuff in college. I'm not proud of it. No, you didn't vandalize. No, we just we just liked good furniture. I'm saying what I did. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, we just liked good furniture. Yeah. Um, that would just be hidden. So yeah. that people now, I think, would just be like, ah, "What is this?" And it's like, "Oh, it's so nice." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's awesome. Um, so that was kind of that time, but. Yeah, the Michael Graves days, we've always, um, we've been looking back at it, I think, because, I mean, I, I started there 15 years ago, left about 10, um, and... You did five years there. Almost, yeah, almost oh. five, and um, so it was funny, like, Eli and Leah came out, um, Eli was... Is that where they met, or did they know each other Yeah, they met, okay, I cool. mean, I, Michael Graves is also, like, a... a there's a lot of us that coupled off there. That's interesting. Sean and myself, um, Eli and Leah, and there was a couple others that, like, at that time, coupled off or eventually coupled off. That's uh, interesting you were able to do that in a workplace because that's normal. Yeah, I mean, and actually, like, Sean and I met more at the, the local bar than we did cool. there. How big was Michael Graves? Uh, I mean, I don't know. We had a really good great group of like young population like it was like yeah. thriving in the 2006 2007 um yeah it was a between the industrial design department and the architecture department and like there's really wasn't much else you could do besides hang out with each other so it's kind of like college so, like yeah, you're just kind of together and then i guess um, Bayfix was a little bit like that when i was there Bayfix? oh is that um where you were yeah I, I worked there briefly in like 2013 just as an intern but it was like I mean, there were 3,500 of us at the time. Oh, wow. And so it was, I don't know, I mean, it was like college-y, like you would hang out and, you know. There was yeah, I like, mean, like we would have weird hours. I mean, people and the industrial design and architecture were kind of like separate. We did collaborate on things. Um, I was hoping we'd always collaborate on more, but it just didn't happen. Uh, and then the pandemic, not the pandemic, the, the recession of 2008, eight nine hit. Um, but we were just you had nothing else to do to kind of like hang out with each other so we just yeah, do sense. i don't say like weird things but we always went to the there was like a local bar um that we'd always hang out with and it was the princeton crowd so it was just there's the i hate to say like the the elite ivy uh, and then you have these scrappy you have yeah. these you have yeah. these scrappy like weirdos <laughs> that are not part of like there's a bunch of fortune 500 companies in Princeton. I didn't realize that. yeah like on the route one there's a bunch of fortune 500 companies but like we we were like these weird scrappy weirdos that like could be in new york or you could be in philadelphia but we're living in princeton new jersey yeah. for voluntarily um yeah, for sure. and so it was just it That's um it was just a we're, like the people we'd meet um it was just fun it was so much fun That's cool. um there's really good thrift stores nice and stuff. yes um and um i was able to kind of just be for a little bit which was awesome yeah um, nobody really does that anymore no yeah yeah no no one does um i kind of missed some of it uh and then uh 
Tampa. And it, you're sandwiched between New York and Philadelphia, so you're able to kind of get out fast. Um, yeah, that's cool. And I was able to see a lot of friends, and we would do our thing and stuff like that. But It sounds like fun. Yeah, yeah. We made a... Imagine the work was fulfilling, too. I mean, not imagine. Yeah, it was hard. I mean, it was hard, like, particularly when that recession hit also. So the layoffs were pretty brutal. Yeah, they would have to be the... Between... Well, like, each studio kind of did it, like, differently. And um, we... The the architecture side kind of kept a lot of the, the, the young folks because we could produce... A lot of shit like it just like for competitions and stuff so we were just in constant competition rendering mode i was doing some crazy stuff for like mecca um designing a hotel thing for oh, mecca cool. yeah for a pilgrimage so that, that was like awesome. super fascinating um because you're also thinking about like traffic that control mecca. yeah like That's that awesome. mecca yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. i mean like so you're designing some like really interesting things um the mecca that all the other meccas are named after yeah like just you're doing yeah. a study on like what a hotel would be there like just to think of like the people that would come there and then like the just how many the... people pass through mecca i have like, no i mean just, just like when the pilgrimage yeah oh it, it the rooms were like bunkers that we were kind of like just that's interesting like hostels yeah like a huge hostel um so uh so you were just turning over volume would be the idea with that hotel yeah yeah, I mean, it was it was conceptual, and yeah. nothing happened of it. But like, um, we were just doing a lot of competition things, um, and then just kind of waiting for the time to like, yeah, get a project and get out of the recession. So makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of how even you kind of like right now it. with the the pandemic, and I mean, my a lot of my um, focus is on corporate workplace and um those type of developments and... yeah those, some of the ideas coming about now i think are pretty weird well, yeah how so like like what specifically well, i don't know i mean like it seems like people are trying to figure out how to embrace work from home and there's a lot of you know like flexible workspace offices but then some people get told to do these initiatives by like executive leadership of their companies but they don't know why they're being told to do this initiative so the idea gets like what kind so, of initiative like so like somebody that works at like a big corporation reached out to me recently and said that they needed to get they used some buzzword but the takeaway i got was like something similar to like the workspace that you work in at Perkins Eastman. Oh. But like, you know, like it, it was like a flexible, like the desk isn't really for a person. It's more for an activity. Yes. Work but, points. Yeah. Work, word. Work, but like they didn't really, fully, the person talking about the thing they were trying to do didn't really get why they were trying to do it. And so I'm like, what's your motivation for box. this? Well, yeah, exactly. And I'm like, I just kept asking these penetrating questions because that's kind of in my nature. Yeah. And finally, like, because my CEO is telling me to. Like, uh. you know, it's, yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and and we're at like this interesting part of what does this hybrid workplace mean? Because everyone, I know, I think like almost every firm or office has been like, well, we'll send the employee survey, and it's never coming back. Like a hundred percent, I want to be back in the office a hundred percent of the time. It's yeah. not happening. Um, and I think the flexibility and the autonomy. I think it would be helpful for the employee to be able to like, this is where I need to work and how I need to work. Um, and understanding why you need to come into the office, not you need to come into the office. Yeah. And I think that's fair. Like uh, I, I've been lucky enough to work at companies where I don't need to come into the office on a regular basis for like yeah. the last seven years, but I kind of prefer working in an office cause I feel like it, sort of gets like I'm extroverted so it mm -hmm. kind of gets me pumped with some human interaction and then I feel like I work well when I'm in a room with other people that are also working toward a common goal yeah but then tomorrow I'll be working from home because you know I don't know well it, it helps with your work-life balance because you're trying to go somewhere or something like that after so yeah, your work-life exactly. balance is like you can you can bang out what you need to do in the morning and then cut off in the afternoon and but, but that flexibility is super important yeah i think now well some people do seem to be more efficient with it like i don't think everybody's created equal like i know some people that 
seem to work better from home than they mm-hmm. do in an office. And, you know, I believe them when they say they do. So I don't know. No, I agree. And like, um, with some things, I feel like I waste more time when I'm in the office. Like, I just want to get some shit done. And people are just like, oh my God, I want to talk, I want to talk, I want to talk. Yeah, I and like, so and, 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 and I'm hoping that's just kind of a phase of just trying to like get back into it. Um, I think it's a phase that people just trying to, but I think what we're trying, I think what's going to be really telling with the Perkins Eastman office, we're going to be doing a post hoc survey post occupancy yeah okay. um just to, we did an initial survey to kind of figure out where we are what we're doing and then um we're going to be doing a post occupancy survey which kind of got kicked because of the pandemic because you we pulled coming back in the office because of the uptick in pittsburgh and all that stuff and so now we're finally everything's back down so now we can go uptick back in COVID. yeah okay and, um and so it would be interesting in like six months we're gonna get like an or eight months i don't know they haven't decided exactly when we'll get like another survey to be um of the very similar questions to compare yeah. and see where you're working but and it's I'm kind sure of funny someone's gonna spreadsheet it and make a flow chart or probably and then like we have a really f- awesome sure, like yeah. graphics department that really could jazz up anything and actually make anything <laughs> really look pretty um and they're just like nice. oh my god. yeah oh my god our um one of my colleagues she's phenomenal um nice really really like great at the jazzing up and just super creative that smart awesome. um and very tasteful um but yeah so that should be interesting it's kind of it, it's funny, like we could, I could work anywhere in the office and I kind of like to sit in the same spot, like in the same area. Yeah, I do the same thing. Because it's just, it's quieter. It's a little far remote. I don't feel like I'm on display. Um, I feel like the other work points, you're kind of like, people are always passing or looking at you or they're like, management's like making sure you're in or something like that. Ah, so like you Christ. can kind of like hide in the back and um, I really like yeah, <laughs> kind of like where I'm so like, I mentioned like I, I kind of get energy from human interaction mm-hmm. so sometimes that helps me work like there's times when like it's gonna sound bad but like I paid people to come to meetings where I didn't really need their support because just having another person there made me better at my job um, <laughs> I've never paid anyone to come oh, well, just, we don't I mean, have that fee like with our projects to ever like yeah but that's interesting but, um, I mean, you know, like I, I've done that at certain points for certain projects. Um, I mean, I, you know, obviously people are still contributing. I'm not just being yeah. somebody that's dead weight. Just oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's collaboration. That's, that's kind of, you, you feed off other people. You get ideas from other people. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's super important. Um, I think we're in this like adjustment period of trying to get back in, um, adjust our project teams to meet that like with the COVID stuff we've been able to spread across multiple offices and actually i think that's been really interesting because we've always had multiple office teams but um i don't think we were ever if whatever team is more dominant on whatever side that was in person yeah the outliner like on the other side um always felt like an outcast versus now I think we're more sensitive to everyone's environment. Yeah. Considering so that you're, you're like, I was on, I'm on this one project, um, for this business school and we have every majority of the teams in Pittsburgh. We have two members in New York. We still kept all our meetings, even if we're in the office on the camera, because we're just like it's not fair to the other team member because we just the conversation turns insular so fast yeah and i'll do um, that too where and um... so like i think we didn't have that because i've been on the other end on other project teams before the pandemic and within 30 minutes of the meeting everyone's kind of like on the other side that's in person the majority is like their backs to the camera. They completely forgot about the people oh, on the other like side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like, and so like, I think 
with the what has been interesting about the pandemic, I think it is open the door to better collaboration in that sense. And also um management, the powers that be, um, has seen that there is some benefit for like we can trust our employees to kind of do the yeah, job. I don't sure. need you I think there's a lot of like if I see it, it's happening. And a lot of the times it's like some of it's smoke and mirrors, you know, yeah. like I'm just uh, oh yeah, working. I mean, both, like, I'm sure there's people that will slack off when they're working from home, but also there's people that slack off in the office. And exactly, but some of it's like stuff. it's like the I'm complaining. There's like, also productive but, people like, that work yeah. from home. And exactly, and I think it, it, it's opening. Yeah. Like it's just like we're still figuring it out because like we're we're coming out of like that the '60s eras of how we would work. I mean, yeah. open office was like painful. Yeah. Um, and now it's like, oh, open office is too much for a lot of people. Um, yeah. but yeah, it know. makes sense. It's it's getting there. open office was the word my colleague used. Oh, yeah, yes. Um, but they didn't understand why they were trying to do it until I finally prized out of them that an executive was making them. <laughs> oh, oh, for your, like your new space or no, no, no. This no. was a, a buddy of mine at a at a big company that was telling me that. Do I know anyone that knows about open offices? I, I do. Like, I know about open open Andy offices. Walsh knows about yeah. open offices. I, I know. But I thought that. I thought he meant like the open source software. Like oh, like oh I don't know about open source. I I know it exists, and there needs to be a space to put all the racks, <laughs> and then yeah. like, um, and then those racks need about like three feet in front of each um each of each other. Wait, racks? Like a the. The IT racks, they all need oh, like three no, feet I, or five I, feet in front of them. Um, well, that's that's true. They for the even, electrical panel. All, I think it's all, all that all that cloud stuff needs to go to something eventually, and so that's kind of been uh, like. <laughs> well, it, it, it's funny when I talk with like younger architects and like we're designing these things, and it's like everything's connected. It's surprisingly yeah. like even this cloud stuff that makes no sense. Eventually all of it has to go to something. Yeah, for sure. To power it or do something. No, it's all physical. It's just like everything's connected. So I think with architecture, it's just like, it's that 100,000, 2000 step view. It's like, how can I connect all these things to a, like, look good? Yeah. Um, everything's connected. And I think if you look at design that way, you can, Put the pieces together better. I don't know. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, yeah. That's cool. So everything's connected. Yeah. Is that a good note to end on? Yeah, I think so. I feel like that's a good one. Uh, I mean, is there anything you want to plug? Um, Basedesign.com. <laughs> Basedesign.com is really great. Um, industrial design, graphics and any design in general um i'm also a ceramic and weaving oh, artist and i am house 1020 it's coming up house but we'll put that in the um your description and then Sweet. it should be it's basically launched but i just gotta finish up the llc so make Makes sure sense. no one takes it but um, if you stuck around this long and you like what you've heard please give us a like and smash that subscribe button or smash that like button and give us a subscribe we're always looking for new and interesting people to have on the show if you know anyone good send an email to podcast at ska.solutions or leave a comment below thanks again for listening and please come to the next one